<sighs> Streaking in fields because of fungicide applications is absolutely starting to show up this year. The last time it showed up was in 2019 when we had really bad tar spot in Northeast Iowa. The time before that was 2015 and 2016 when the Northern corn leaf blight was really getting out of hand. So before we discuss the mechanics of it, the why, the what, let's go into this field. We're gonna grab ears from the dead stuff, the brown stuff, and we're gonna grab ears from the green stuff and get some weights. Alrighty, we're inside kind of where it looks brown from the other side of the hill. Our major disease in this field was absolutely tar spot. We didn't end up with a whole lot of southern rust right in this geography. So I've still got green stalks on most of my plants, but clearly it died, went to pot a little bit earlier than the other stuff. So we're gonna grab 32 ears to represent one one thousandth of an acre. Um, and then we'll get them weighed up. I've made my way about 20 feet over into where it looks greener from the side hill. Much greener upper canopy, obviously you come down. The, the mid to lower canopy is just as brown, still seeing that same level of tar spot here. Um, and of course the, the stalks are pretty green as well. I would say that when you're walking from the brown area to the green area, it's much more of a gradient from the brown to the green it doesn't happen just like that so although it looks like there's a lot of area that's brown versus green um it's almost kind of hard as you're walking through it to see it switch really quick because it happens fairly gradually okay so before we go weigh ears and come up with yield differences i think there's a couple things that we should keep in mind as we go forward in this discussion First and foremost, probably the most important is the big disclaimer. This is a single sample from a single year and results absolutely will vary, okay? Um, this is just one field, one example. That variability between this field's experience and possibly yours is gonna rely on a lot of different things. What was your disease pressure like? Which disease were you dealing with? What was the hybrid susceptibility to those diseases and probably the most important is when did you start seeing the streaking? The closer you were to black layer, the less yield impact that streaking is going to give you. All right, the next two things that I'm really trying to keep in mind, even though this, honestly, this feels emotional to me. Um, the two things that I'm really trying to keep in mind is the how and why and my expectation. Okay, so on the how and why portion of it, why are we seeing this? The reason that we're seeing this is because of the extreme disease pressure that we had in 2025. The last time I saw widespread streaking because of fungicide applications was in 2015 and 2016, when we had two years of very widespread Northern corn leaf blight epidemic, when we were using mostly airplanes and some helicopters, okay? We saw the streaking because of the extremes. Now, when you have an extreme year, very small differences mean very big impacts. A great example is the drought of 2023. We were in an extreme drought in 2023 and only an inch of moisture from one place to another made very large yield impacts. So if we apply that to the disease year of 2025, let's say that um, the difference out here is not where, where we had a skip, where no fungicide was applied, and where we had fungicide applied. If it's a distribution thing, maybe we're seeing areas that are brown had like 80%, a 0.8x rate of the prescribed fungicide. And in another area, you were having maybe a 1.2x rate. A very small factor, right? Small margin of error that's producing a very large impact. Another thing that comes to mind when I think about the distribution of the fungicide is especially in a year when higher rates are paying and in a lot of cases, two applications are paying. And this is just me thinking out loud, right? Is it possible that those areas that got a higher rate of fungicide benefited even more 
So we're yielding even more in those areas than we otherwise would have with a perfect 1x application. And those areas with the lower rate, are we just kind of, is it gonna, does it turn out to be a wash? And I don't know if we get the answer to that question. These are all things that we need to be thinking about. Um, my last point of discussion or thought before we get to the yield results is, what are our expectations of that application? Because again, it's been almost 10 years since we've seen it this bad across such a wide geography. So the airplanes, the helicopters, the drones are all calibrated, okay? Um, if they're doing it right, okay? There definitely are places out there where uh, you know, if some guy got his own drone and it was his first time using it and he's still on a learning curve, might not be perfect for that. But let's assume that the applicators, the pilot, they are good applicators, they are good pilots, and they have calibrated their equipment. Then what is your expectation of the quality of the application? And what should our expectations be? Um, if you don't ever want to see the possibility of streaking, then it's going to require making that application with a high clearance rig. But if you farm really hilly territory, or if it rains and it rains and it rains and you can't get in there, or if you just don't have access to a high clearance rig, it's going to have to be applied from the air. And then does the cost, the, does the value, the cost of that application match up with your expectations of what is possible because again there is a very good chance that a lot of the streaking isn't a bad job we could just be seeing very small differences but it's magnified because of the extreme environment that we're dealing with in 2025. so every field every instance every experience on this might just be a little bit different but what it's going to come down to is uh what it's going to come down to is how much of a difference does it make? Are there improvements that we can make? And will it make a difference in the following years? And what are our other options? Let's get to the yield and we can have the full discussion later on. All right, we've got our bucket here from our green areas and we're looking at a total weight of 23 pounds for our one one thousandth of an acre. One one thousandth of an acre for our brown stuff and that is 21 pounds but that's not the whole story because the moisture we could be just looking at a water weight difference so we're going to shell these and get a moisture as well moisture on the brown stuff is 24 percent with a 40 54 and a half pound test weight moisture on the green corn 27 and a half 54 pound test weight here is the formula that I'm using. Ear number, I'll be using 32,000 for our population, times the average ear weight divided by the moisture percentage times a factor of 1.411 plus 46.2. So when we look at the green areas, we had a total bucket weight of 23 pounds minus the bucket weight of 1.8 gives us a corn ear weight of 21.2 pounds divided by 32 ears gives us an average ear weight of 0.6625 at 27 and a half percent so 32,000 was our population times average ear weight divided by 27 and a half by our factor plus 46.2 brings us down here average yield 249 and a half in the area where the corn was brown Overall weight of 21 pounds minus bucket weight of 1.8 gives us 19.2 pounds. Divided by 32 ears gives us an average ear weight of 0.6 at 24% moisture. Plug it into our formula, 32,000 times 0.6 average ear weight. Our moisture factor, overall yield of 239.81. So giving us about a 10 bushel difference. So that's all I've got for now. This is not an answer. This is a single example and a way to start the conversation on how can we constantly be improving and doing better. And please, if you have the opportunity to go out and take some similar readings, I would love to see what your results are and what your thoughts are. If you've got any questions, call, text, or email.